What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for January 27th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Saturday edition of the podcast. As always, let's start with a recap of yesterday's question of the day. And I asked you, what should the offensive coordinator's first top priority be? And it was pretty close, but for the most part, 83% of you said that it had something to do with the scheme or the play calling. Um, The new scheme slightly edged consistent play calling, but it all comes down to play calling. And I, I don't necessarily disagree with that because I think the other two fit into that. So red zone efficiency as well as getting Jalen Hurts right. If your scheme and your play calling is suited to whatever your quarterbacks and your offensive strengths are, you should be successful. So, as always, thank you for participating in today's question of the day. Be sure to text or call the text line 267-495-8531 to get your voice heard. Still open for names for that too, but I have an idea. So stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mont. Let's get them up over 100 I know you're out there watching because I can see the analytics, so let's just do it and then help grow this thing and and see where we can go. Buy some Girl Scout cookies. You're going to buy them anyway. Why not buy them from Ella? All the information you need is in the link below. She's been busting. She is 13 boxes from her goal, so let's get her over the goal by the end of the weekend, hopefully even by the end of the day, and let's take down the soccer moms. But if you want Girl Scout cookies, everything you need, follow the link in the description. Help Ella and her troop go on their camping trip. All right, let's start with some Sixers news. And just an update from yesterday when I was talking about Joe's All-Star appearances. It is his seventh All-Star game. He is fifth all-time in Sixers history behind Dolph Shays, Dr. J, Hal Greer, and AI. Chen Lemon, who I mentioned yesterday, was a a shortstop and an outfielder for the Chicago White Sox and the Detroit Tigers. Not sure why I thought Joel Embiid was behind him in all-star games all time for Sixers history. Sometimes things like that just happen. But so, like I said, I always try to make sure things are accurate, but not even a Philly player. So apologize for I'm not sure who. I think I was thinking Dolph Shays, and somehow that turned into Chet Lemon. Eh, It happens. But Joe, seven all-star appearances, fifth all-time in Sixers history. If he makes it next year, he will tie AI. Uh, Dolph Shays leads with 12, Dr. J 11, and then Hal Greer 10. Big game today for the Sixers, though, against the Nuggets. Joe, even after that knee scare the other night, is not on the injury report. Maxi, however, is questionable with an ankle. Tobias is still six, so he's questionable. Hopefully those guys come back and play because I have a feeling playing at home, the Nuggets are going to look to to avenge the the game from the other night. But it should be it must see TV and, and entertaining. So looking forward to that. The Flyers are also in action today, this afternoon at the Wells Fargo Center against the Bruins. It is Mark Recchi Day, Hall of Fame weekend. He will be inducted into the Flyers Hall of Fame. They played the alumni game last night. I didn't even see if there was any highlights or anything from that, but always a cool thing to bring all the old guys back. It is the 50th. They're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Stanley Cup teams. (coughs) Excuse me. (coughs) I apologize for that. Hard to believe that it's been 50 years since the Flyers have won the Stanley Cup. Uh, One, because that's a long time especially for a team like the Flyers who kind of prides itself as being one of the <clears throat> more uh, storied franchises in the league. Um, and two, just because uh, they last won it in 75, they were in the Stanley Cup Finals in 76. I was born in 77, so that like the math there is kind of like, whew, okay. Uh, but, yeah, that's... That's scary. Uh, But anyway, so they're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Stanley Cup teams. They did uh, sign Owen Tippett to an eight-year, $49.6 million contract extension. So essentially, he's going to be a big part of this rebuild that I'm predicting that is coming with Danny Breer running the team. 
Uh, they also unveiled their Stadium Series jerseys for the game against the Nets. They're pretty cool, I guess. I mean, I guess because they're the away team, there's a lot more white in them than I would like. I'd still feel the ones they used, um, the orange ones with the keystone uh, patches on it, they're my favorite. But the Stadium Series ones for these, they're not bad. Um, like I said, let me know your thoughts on them if, if you have a thought. But I don't know. They're just, I would have liked to see more color in them, but. I'm sure plenty of you out there will buy them. All right. We do have some Phillies news, and it's going to be a big Phillies day here on the podcast. They, they did send a nice message to Reese Hoskins and his wife on Twitter, just kind of thanking him for all his contributions on and off the field. And I guess looking at I probably should have given him more props when he would sign with Milwaukee than what I did. Uh, he definitely was a solid player on the field. <clears throat> he uh, was very streaky, though. Like, he would go, even when that was part of his first year when he got called up, when he went on that home run streak. Uh, but he, when he was on, he was on. But when he was cold, he was cold. Biggest memory, like I mentioned the other day, was that hit or the homer against the Braves when he slammed the bat down. But he did do, him and Jamie did do a lot off the field with muscular dystrophy. So just a class act guy. Uh, It's a shame just the injury happened. He wasn't able to be a part of the team last year uh, as far as being on the field. And then just with the circumstances of having a knee injury, the fact that Bryce Harper is moving to first base, basically left him without a place to play on this team. Uh, Part of that is because of... Just Schwarber being sometimes a liability in the field. Uh, but, I mean, that, that happens. It's part of the business. He's also coming off a major knee injury. So I, I, I'm not upset at the Phillies for, for allowing him to walk. But wish him the best. And like I said, he was always a class act. Did good things on and off the field. Uh, and wish him the best in Milwaukee as long as they're not playing the Phillies. In order to get ready for Philly season. You need to go to Philly Goat. These shoes they have are amazing. And it's just not Phillies. You got Eagle shoes. There's Sixers shoes. There's Flyer shoes. Just go check them out. These canvas loafers are going to be phenomenal. I'm telling you, when you're down at the shore, you're going to see all kinds of people wearing these shoes. Buy them now. Get your Believe shirt. Match them up with the Schmitties. Buy a Joe shirt. Match them up with the Spectrums. Like, they're want to get ready for union season they have dupes like the the shoes i love the names of them but the shoes themselves they're just phenomenal like i i would i want to buy every pair and just wear so go check out philly goat for the the canvas loafers but at the same time yeah you have great t-shirts there too get ready for spring do it now use the promo code jim montgomery for 10 percent off of your order if you're still on your new year's resolutions like i am Maybe you buy a smaller one for the spring to give you a little bit of motivation to to work hard. Whatever you got to do, go to phillygoat.com. They have you covered for all your Philly sports-based apparel needs. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery at checkout for 10% off of your order. But check out those shoes, man. Those things are phenomenal. All right, we do have some Eagles news. Not a lot. Uh, Pretty quiet. They No word on the offensive coordinator position yet, so it's still open. However, it's, I did read a couple articles about just the fact that uh, Jalen was so close to Brian Johnson and now he's not there. What does it mean? And, I mean, obviously Jalen has worked with how many ever coordinators uh, in his career going back to college. Uh, hasn't had the same one consistent. But this is the first time in the NFL he's not going to have Brian Johnson which might be a good thing because of the close relationship he had with him, uh, knowing him since he was a kid through his dad and everything. So I want to see how how that dynamic plays out. And, and I really do think this is a make or break year for Jalen. Uh, I'm reading a lot of rumblings that because of the way the contract is uh, structured, that the Eagles could actually trade him this this offseason and really be in really good shape moving forward. I don't know if that's the answer, 
But Howie being Howie, I don't necessarily think it's not the answer, if that makes sense. But I don't think you're bringing Sirianni back and then getting rid of Hurts. So we'll see how that plays out. But it's just, I, I think it might be good. And Hurts really needs to, to be introspective and, and go with what he's done throughout his career. And when there's adversity, look, look inward and really come out on top uh, and I, I there's no reason to believe that he won't do that I, this last offseason was unique uh, and well like I said it's a make or break year though because if he comes out like he did last year then you need to start questioning is he the answer quarterback uh, but w- w- we'll know more I guess once we hire an offensive coordinator on the defensive side they are starting to interview some coaches uh, Joe Barry uh, interviewed for the linebacker coach as well as Mike Caldwell, who Mike Caldwell was just in here interviewing for the defensive coordinator position. Be cool to bring him back, an ex-player who played under Jim Johnson. Uh, but Joe Barry has defensive coordinator experience in Detroit, Washington, and Green Bay. He might be the kind of guy to bring in as a linebacker coach uh, to work and be that. I talked yesterday about the go-between. Uh, same way with Caldwell. I liked both of these guys be interviewed. I wouldn't mind having both of them on the staff, sort of as the the go between between Fangio and the players, uh, and especially because linebacker is going to be such a key position anyway. But especially in Vic Fangio's defense, and um, they're going to need the players. The three four, he, he runs a three four, and apparently when two years ago when they went to the Super Bowl. They still didn't necessarily have the right fit. So hopefully Howie's going to start working his magic and the whole whatever the Eagles' philosophy on linebackers is, hopefully that switches and changes and they're able to uh, like not be stubborn and bring linebackers in. But I, like I said, Joe Barry, Mike Caldwell, interviewing for the linebacker coach position. I, I don't hate that at all. Uh, hopefully... We make moves soon. Uh, I'm wondering, too, if after this weekend we're going to see a a lot more because you're going to have some big names, whether it's somebody from San Francisco, Detroit, Baltimore, or Kansas City. There's going to be rumblings for uh, coaches on those teams over the next two weeks. So let's see how this weekend plays out, and we should be getting some clarity on that moving forward. All right. While you're out working out today, it's supposed to be a beautiful day. Last I heard, uh, once the fog burns off, pop on the Clashing Conferences podcast. Listen to them. The, my bu- boys are doing a great job over there. That's available wherever you get your podcast, as well as on YouTube. All right, today we're going to go back to 1982. And on this day, 1982, the Phillies traded Larry Boa and Ryan Sandberg to the Cubs for Yvonne De Jesus. Now, Bo was 36, De Jesus was 29. Kind of hoping that they were going to get younger with that. Uh, both of them played, or De Jesus played three years in Philly. Boa ended up playing four more years total, um, three and a half, I guess. And their numbers were similar. Uh, however, Avon De Jesus did start for the National League Championship team in 1983. Uh, They would have gotten the same production out of Larry Boa. However, Ryan Sandberg is the key component to this trade. All he would do would play 15 years in Chicago, uh, hit 285, had over 2,300 hits, 282 homers, 1,000 RBI. Most of those numbers, by the way, and I'm going to keep the streak alive. I know some people think I'm triggering myself when I say this, but, and I I do like, like him. I'm telling you, the jersey's in the closet. But, but numbers are better than Chase Utley. Um, Ten All-Star game appearances, nine gold gloves, seven silver sluggers, led the National League in homers in 1990, won the MVP in 1984. And I think the numbers are comparable with Chase, but that's where Ryan Sandberg completely separates himself is with the All-Stars, the gold gloves, silver sluggers. He is in the Hall of Fame. All of this is... Uh, the Phillies traded him in 1982. He won the MVP in 1984 because they didn't think he was the second baseman of the future. Maybe the Phillies win the 1983 World Series had they held on to Ryan Sandberg. And then 
they could have built around him and a, a, an aging Mike Schmidt. But Mike Schmidt has, a, after that, that 1983 season when they won the National League Championship, Mike Schmidt still had a couple good years. He won the MVP in 1986, for goodness sake. Like, they could have built around Schmidt and Sandberg and kind of passed the torch from Schmidt to Sandberg. But they gave up on Ryan Sandberg way too soon. Uh, all he did was become a Hall of Famer. He did have a stint, uh, not a very successful one, and I don't think it was his fault. I mean, the team was not good. Did well in the Phillies minor league system as a manager. Did manage the Phillies for a little bit after um, Charlie was here. But, again, I don't think that was Ryan's fault. I mean, the, the team was aging. Ruben didn't do him any favors with the contracts and just being stuck with those things. But, Wish him the best. He just did come out this week as well uh, with his, uh, I forget the, I'm probably going to butcher this, but basically prostate prostate cancer that has metastasized. There it is. Um, so wish him the best in his treatment for that. Uh, hopefully a, a speedy recovery, sending thoughts and prayers to him. But on this day in 1982, the Phillies traded away. Ryan Sandberg and Larry Boa for Yvonne De Jesus. Uh, the De Jesus Boa thing was pretty much a wash, but throwing in Ryan Sandberg in there was just that's brutal. That is a brutal trade, especially for what he went on to do. And like I said, he could have, I think, had you have Ryan Sandberg in that lineup with Schmidt and all of the aging things, um, I think uh, Joe Morgan was the second baseman on that team. Uh, you got to think an older aging Joe Morgan uh, throw a young Ryan Sandberg in there um, they would have won it and it's just man you could have built around the end of Schmidt's career and maybe we didn't go into the dark ages of the the late 80s early 90s Phillies but on this day in 1982 that's when that trade happened which leads us to today's question of the day 267-495-8531 get you in on the voice and text line hit me up on the social medias as well but what is the worst trade in philly's history is it the sandberg and boa for Ivan de jesus trade is it the trade that sent malcolm uh malcolm ferguson jenkins to the cubs uh he was traded with uh a couple other he was kind of like another one of those guys who was thrown in there for larry jackson and bob bull was it the von hayes five for one trade or was it the cliff lee trade for Filippo mott brian gillis and jc ramirez let me know what you think what is the worst trade in philly's history and i mean you go through them. Sandberg, like I said, with the 83 World Series. Ferguson Jenkins would have ended up crossing paths at one point with both Rick Wise and Steve Carlton. So imagine having Jenkins and Carlton on the same rotation. Uh, the Von Hayes just, he was who he was. They overvalued him. But, I mean, none of those five players. But, man, if those five players were that sought after, what else could you have gotten for it? Uh, and then the Cliff Lee one, and, and we'll get more into to Cliff Lee here in a minute, but just a dumb decision to trade him at that time, uh, especially with the money that Ruben was throwing around back then to trade Cliff Lee. Just ridiculous. Uh, but let me know, what is the worst trade in Philly's history? 267-495-8531. Is it trading away Ryan Sandberg? Is it trading away Ferguson Jenkins? Is it trading five players for Von Hayes? Or trading Cliff Lee for basically a bag of crap? Let me know. 267-495-8531. Okay. Speaking of Cliff Lee, we are going to take a look at our free agent who had a fresh start in Philly. And that today is Cliff Lee. Take two. He signed a five-year, $120 million contract in 2011 to come back to the Phillies after he was traded away for... Uh, Felipe Omont, Brian Gillis, and J.C. Ramirez, uh, and then ended up playing with two or th two other teams and went to the World Series in 2010. Uh, but in, back in 2011, he was re-signed by the Phillies. Um, Could have kept him and just, I, I don't get it, Rube. I don't get it. Make it make sense. Uh, but he did turn down a longer deal with the Yankees uh, to take less years, more money per year to stay with the Phillies. 
Uh, he loved it here. I believe, if I remember, he had never sold his condo down in Rittenhouse. So it was kind of like, okay, he just was ready to move right back in. That year, 2011, he became one of the four aces. Him, Roy Halladay, Cole Hamels, and Roy Oswald. 2011, he came back, and this is tough to do. Arguably had the best season of his career. He went 17-8 and eight with a 2.4 ERA, which was the second lowest of his career. A 1.027 whip. Six shutouts in 232 and two-thirds innings. Career high in strikeouts, 238. He was an all-star. He hit 200, two homers, two doubles, and seven RBIs, and even stole a base. Just was loving life coming back to Philly. And that 2011 Phillies team was one of the best Phillies teams in their history, winning 102 games. He would play three more years with the Phillies, won an all-star, or went to an all-star game in 2013. Uh, the team was rapidly declining, and then all of a sudden, like a, uh, Roy Holiday as well, Cliff Lee got old pretty fast. And honestly, like I feel like Cliff Lee got hurt in um, what was it, 2014, and then just disappeared off the face of the earth. Like I don't even know what happened to him. Cliff, if you're out there, contact me. Uh, but that 2011 season is what puts him on our free agent who had a fresh start list. Not that at the time he needed a fresh start, but he came in. Had arguably the best season of his career. Uh, that pitching staff was was great. It's just the offense was was too streaky that year. Uh, and I think the, the pitching staff is one of the main reasons they won 102 games that year. But going back to the, and I know I'm kind of cross-pollinating here, but back to the question of the day, that trade, could you imagine if they did not trade Cliff Lee? They trade it for, for Roy Holiday, and then you had Cliff Lee and Roy Holiday on that team in 2010. They, I, I got I to feel the way that Cliff Lee pitched in 2010, they would have beaten the Giants in the NLCS that year uh, and possibly taken on the Rangers because would the Rangers have gotten to – this is the ultimate butterfly effect here – but would the Rangers have gotten to the World Series without Cliff Lee that year? It's worth mentioning. Uh, but Cliff Lee is our free agent who had a fresh start in Philly – the second time he was here, uh, mainly for that 2011 season where he was just phenomenal. And I think he finished third in the the Cy Young. So he had like a, a – it was a quiet, under-the-radar season. Like everybody was like, oh, Roy Holiday is the de facto ace on this team. But Charlie even said – he was like, we have an ace going out there four out of five days. Like – we'll be okay there is no number one but Cliff Lee was often seen as the the second guy on that team had probably the best year and finished third in the Cy Young I mean Clayton Kershaw I think won it that year and just ran away with it he was dominant but so Cliff Lee back in 2011 when he re-signed with the Phils that was his fresh start I still say they should have never gotten rid of him they would have won the World Series in 2010 take that to the bank but is it the worst trade in Philly sports history? Let me know. 267-495-8531 on the text and voice line. Was it that Cliff Lee trade? Was it Ryan Sandberg and Larry Boa for Yvonne De Jesus? Ferguson Jenkins for Larry Jackson and Bob Bull? Uh, Von Hayes, 5 for 1. Get your vote in. Let me know. The fact that there is that many quality trades that are terrible on this list just goes to show you why the Phillies are one of the worst organizations in the history of professional sports of any type. But let me know what your thoughts are. All in honor of this day in 1982, the Phillies traded away Larry Bow and Ryan Sandberg for Yvonne De Jesus. De Jesus would be part of that National League championship, but what could have been with Sandberg and Schmidt through the mid-80s? Hoo, hoo, hoo. Uh, anyway, go to phillygoat.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order while you're out there. Check out my boys at the Clashing Conferences. Buy your Girl Scout cookies from Ella. We're so close. 13 boxes away. Just click the link. Get in touch with me. If you're close, I'll, I'll even deliver them for you if you want. Uh, I'll have Ella deliver them with me if you want. Uh, but let's, let's help her out. Let's help that troop get on their camping trip. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mont. Big Sixers and Flyers games today. Hopefully we have more clarity on the Eagles coordinator situation as we progress through the weekend. Get out and enjoy today because it's supposed to rain again tomorrow. 
This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have a Saturday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.